Okay, that's a quick demonstration of how I make a picture frame. So uh, this is just a picture which I've got lying around. So first thing to do is work out the size that we want. So I'm checking the uh, size of the, the actual image here, and that's 190, 190 by 245. Okay, that's not actually the size of the paper, that's just the size of the image itself. You have um, to decide whether you're going to um, have the have some of the white showing around the edge, or whether you're going to have the, uh, the mat going straight up over the side of the side of the picture. So I like to, um, in these cases, actually just have the mat over the side of the picture, so that uh, I, I can actually have a little bit of movement to get it lined up exactly where I want. I've done several um, where the uh, white of the uh, image is, is showing around the border uh, but I find that, that you actually have to be a little bit more precise with that so uh, I avoid it if I can. So now um, the mat goes around the outside of the image and you need to decide how much mat you want to uh, want to go for. So uh, this is actually this picture has got quite a bit on the bottom so I'm going to go for um, I'll, I'll probably cut a little piece of that off. I don't need that much there. Just uh, cut that off. So I'm, uh, I'm in my narrow, narrow phase for. For mats at the moment. So that's just made that a little bit more. Uh, What I'm doing now is trying to work out the size for the, the mat. So I usually go for something like a 20, uh, 25 millimeters of uh, visible mat. Um, that's quite a narrow amount, but that's uh, what I like uh, nowadays as being quite a uh, you know, reasonable size. So I'm looking for 25 here, 25 here, 25 here, and 25 here. So the, out, uh, the outer size uh, side of the mat up to the frame uh, will actually be 25. Now with the uh, frame stick that I'm using, the sticks that I'm using, these are 20 millimeters wide and the uh, inset is uh, five millimeters. So what I need is I need a, um, to make these actually 30 so that the uh, mat goes out and then I have 25, 25 showing in the frame to the, to the picture. So my sizes for width is 190 plus 60 and for the height it's uh, 245 plus 60 so I'm looking here for uh, 250 and this one I'm looking at 305 so that's the size of my my mat my foam core and my my glazing the hole I'm going to cut out will be I'll probably uh, make it very slightly less I'll make it 185 by 200 out the mat uh, glazing, uh, foam core, and back are all this size. Um, the frame sticks uh, I need to make uh, cut them on the the long edge. It needs to be an extra fifteen uh, uh, extra fifteen millimeters because these are actually twenty wide with a five inset. So I need to add another uh, fifteen for each side. So that's uh, another. 30 to each, so, so it's 250 plus 30 and uh, 305 plus 30. So these are going to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 280 and uh, 335. So that's going to be the size of uh, the outside measurement of these, uh, these sticks. So that's the sticks. Okay, I won't cut the mat um, or the, the uh, other pieces until I've made the frame because these may finish up slightly smaller than, uh, than anticipated. So, okay, so that's uh, what we need to do. So I'm going to now move my picture out of the way uh, so that it doesn't get uh, too dirty. It's actually not one of my, uh, it's just a, one I, I have spare. It's not one I'm actually doing for someone specifically. Okay, so here we go. First thing I want to do is cut the sticks to size. That I use a homemade uh, miter block. 
let's see if I can see that in the camera. Yes, I can. That's good. your own, own mouldings quite easily just uh, rip the uh, wood down to size uh, cut a rebate in five millimeters is a good good width for the, uh, the mat and everything else to sit in sticks to 280 so that's my saw this is just a cross cut hand saw you need to make sure you cut them the right way so this is uh, the inside outside so what I'm looking for here is, is that angle and at the other end I'm looking for for that angle so line this up on here just cut the end off so that's nice now a nice uh, 45 degrees it may not be perfect but it's going to be close. So what I'll do now is I'll mark on my uh, 280 on the short side. And this one, same, same way around. And I'm going to make sure that this one, I'm going to cut just the other side of the line, the mark, so that I can uh, left with 280 on my finish. Okay, so there's my first first one rough cut off. Now the next piece, let's trim that end to the right point. Now I'm going to cut a long one out of this. This is going to be three, three, five. So uh, three, three, one so a little tip here I've got a little bit of sandpaper on there just fine grade sandpaper it helps just to hold everything still uh, cut this end off now of course you can buy a mitre cutter which will uh, which will do things uh, way way uh, simpler now what I'm going to do is, is uh, cut the next one but I'm going to use Use the piece I've already cut to uh, determine my uh, my length. So that's now two two short pieces longer piece and a better tip here if you actually just line up the points rather than trying to line up the edge you can actually get a pretty accurate pretty accurate alignment
Okay, so that's now the uh, sticks cut. And that's the end of the use of the saw. So we can now switch over to just getting the, paint, the ends completely square. Now if you um, if you like you can actually get a, a, a mitre trimmer which will actually trim uh, cut the piece you rough, very roughly cut then you use the mitre trimmer and it knives off the, uh, the edge. What I use is a shooting board, plane. This is actually one I've made myself. So uh, there's lots and lots of instructions on shooting boards. You don't need anything as fancy as this. I do quite a lot, so uh, this is why I use this one. And I've got a plane. I've actually got a dedicated shooting plane. But again, this is mainly because my main hobby is uh, is woodworking. So uh, so now I'm going to make trim these to make them really clean. So what I do is I look for the shortest one. That one's very slightly shorter. You can never get it exact when you do it. So I'm going to do the shorter one first. So I'll just now take this down so it's nice and square. And that's now gone right to the very end. You can see there's a very faint little whisper on the end there, so we'll uh, just take that off. And then one more on here. That should now be a perfect, perfect end, and it's all perfectly square. Do the same for this end. So that one's ready. So that's my, uh, my one which I'm going to now match this one to. So it's very slightly different. You can see how I didn't saw that very square at all. You can see how uh, how wobbly that is. That's why you need to use the uh, shooting board to uh, get it completely square. Or a micro trimmer. I was actually just watching until the end, end was uh, completely being cut by the by the plane. Okay, so that's now done. So now what I'm going to do is just gauge how much to take off of this end. Oh, it's a little bit. So uh, get started on that. Because I was working with uh, my wrong hand to try and not knock the camera over, so my cuts were not quite as, uh, as accurate as they should be. Okay, that's pretty good. Now let's get rid of the ver. Okay, I now have two exactly the same size pieces with perfect 45 degree uh, cuts on them. So now I do the same for the other two. Again, I look for the shortest one first, and that's that one. I look for a fraction this time. You've got a few. You get a feel for uh, how to use the uh, use the plane on the these. So that's now done, and now we need to do the other one. And they're fairly similar in size, so not too much to do. So uh, let's take that one down. Get the other one down so that it's uh, 45 degrees. Now make sure they're the right length. And I'd say that's absolutely perfect. That was a lucky, lucky shot. Okay, so that's now the uh, cutting done. Check the camera's still going. Yeah, it's still recording. Okay. And that's now ready for, uh, for gluing up. 
So uh, to do that, I'll use uh, you can use pretty much any any glue you like. I'm just using Gorilla Glue. This is just a, a Gorilla White Glue. Um, the reason I use that one is it's it goes off in 20 minutes. It doesn't reach full hardness uh, for 24 hours, but uh, 24 minutes allows me to, uh, to start moving things around much quicker. Now this is my band plant. This is a really heavy duty one. I, I make some very big frames, and I also use it for other things as well. So uh, I'll show you how I use this. But I've got a, a really lightweight set here as well, which I use sometimes. Well, let me show you that. And this is this is a super super lightweight one, uh, just made made of you know, plastic corners. It works works equally as well. But I'm used to this big one, so I, I tend to use that all the time. So here we go. So I've got a peg on here, which goes into the pegs on the bench, just to hold everything still. And then I can uh, line this out. Okay, so get this uh, set up, and then what I do is I, I, I glue up with a face down. Uh, the reason I do that is so I can actually ensure that the front edge is a perfect square. Now this is uh, slightly too small for here. Usually my pieces bridge over the gap, no, no problem at all. So I've got some round pin so I can actually get this all nice and flat. And so this is only because this is a smaller, smaller size of uh, picture frame than I'm usually doing. I figured I'd make one the same size as you're intending to do, just so you can actually see see what's involved. Okay, so just get that roughly the size and shape. Now, um, what I find with these clamps, as long as I keep the keep the corners uh, nicely in place, then everything will be square. So you can see that's now nicely lined up. These are all pushed down nicely, and I just put a tiny bit of pressure on it, not a lot. So that's uh, just holding it holding it all together. That's all down flush. And what I'll do now is I'll just check for square. Now the, the thing is if, if the corners, the miters are completely square, then everything will be square. You, what you can do is you can pull these two too tight. And particularly if you've got very narrow pieces of the frame, the clamp will actually squeeze, squeeze these pieces in and it will go out of square. Um, but you don't need too much clamping pressure, so this is now this is now perfectly perfectly square all the way around because everything is exact. These are exactly the same lengths, uh, and the corners are exactly at 45 degrees. So what I do now is actually put some glue on. So the way I do that is just pull up a corner, glue to come out of the front face. So I uh, I actually only glue in this section this section here. No no glue will on there. And that just ensures I should now let some glue out. And all I do is I put a little tiny bit of glue on my spreader and just spread on the uh, suppose the joint. You don't need much glue. You can then put that back down in to make sure it's seated nice and square. And I go around a whole lot and just put a little bit of glue on each one, trying to ensure that it doesn't run out onto the, uh, the show faces. So it doesn't matter if it comes out a little bit on the inside, you can clean that off. But I stay away from the outside edge and away from the bottom. I need just a touch more to finish this last one. So this, this glue uh, goes sets in about 20 minutes. So now I'm just checking that all the corners are nice and tight, make sure that everything's flat down, 
the glue shown now, I'll just wipe that off. There'll be nothing on the on the front face. That one wasn't quite down. That's down now. That's because I'm uh, not on the bench. And that's now all completely down. Final check of square. That's absolutely spot on. So that's now ready to uh, let set. So I'll let that set for about um, 20 minutes. Uh, but you can actually put the uh, the framing nails in before if you like. So what I use is uh, I put most of my stuff in DIY framing, and I just keep going back there. They're very reliable. Uh, this was actually a kit of all the framing pieces that you needed. This is a tool for inserting corners. You don't necessarily need to use corners, um, but I find that a little bit of mechanical assistance for the joint will be is uh, you know, really good. So uh, these are just little corner corner pins. Two, three, four. There's probably some pneumatic tool that does this as well, but. Uh, this tool has got a magnetic end and you just put them on there so you can actually see where they go and then line them up I make sure they go into the middle middle of the piece of wood and, then just hammer in. and that's now in there nice and flush and that gives some mechanical uh, assistance to that joint here's the next one One. Normally I do this uh, after the glue's set, but it's, uh, as long as you've got the clamps on there, it's, uh, it's not going to move. That'll actually hold it all nice and square. And there we go, that's the uh, frame ready to go. So we'll let that set, um, and whilst it's setting, we can get on with cutting the mat and things. So what I'm going to do now is just check my internal dimensions. I'm expecting it to be 250 by 305, so this will be the 305, and that's uh, 306, so that's a millimetre extra, that's fine. And this is 250, exactly. So my frame has come out exactly to the, uh, the size uh, that I'd expected. So leave that dry. So this here is my uh, mat cutter. This was a, a present uh, for my birthday one year. Um, I've actually got it screwed down. Uh, it's not normally screwed down. This this is uh, normally loose, but I've got it screwed to the top of my chest so I can actually uh, lift it up and it doesn't fall off. I've also got some mag extra magnets on here which hold this close so it doesn't swing open um, when it goes down. So um, the way it works is just this is a, a guide to set distances. But initially, you take that out. Because what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut the various pieces to size. I'm sure it's got a protective um, plastic film on it, so it's best to use it with the film on uh, to start off with. So sizes I'm going to do, this is going to be the inside sizes, uh, which uh, were the mat glazing, the foam and the backing. This is going to be 250 by 305. So on here we've got a little stop. Set that to 250. And this is going to cut this one off. What I do, um, if I can find the tape, uh, because this was a very small piece, I need to uh, check that it's square. So that's 250, and I'll check this end is 250 as well. Oh, I actually did get it square. So that was a that's pretty good. That's unusual. I don't usually get it that, that well. So this now is the uh, the knife uh, that you use with this. Um, you set this to the first setting, which is for cutting uh, your mat board. And this is a razor razor blade. 
in here, they're interchangeable. Now what happens with this is uh, you hold, hold down on here and very gently, with the glazing, gently score across. If you press too hard, the blade will bend and you'll get a wavy edge. You just do that several times. Another little trick tip here, what I'm doing is I'm, I've got my fingers against this edge so that the, the edge of the uh, slide doesn't rub on the actual glazing itself. So I'm just holding that very slightly away from the, uh, the glazing with my finger. And that will stop me from getting a, a line on the glazing. So several, several passes across here. Now you hear that now, that's uh, that different sound, that's, uh, that's where it's actually gone through. So that's now cut off, and that will be exactly the size, it's a little bit of waste. And the other direction I want uh, 305, so again adjust this to 305. Uh, your dimensions of course will be different, you need to uh, measure, measure your, your pictures, the same as I did at the beginning. Now this one's long enough to fit on the square edge, so I don't need to check check for square. So let's now do the same again, nice and gently. Uh, what you can do is you can, uh, you can just score it a couple of times and then snap it over the corner of a, a bench. But uh, what I do is just to cut, cut through. So there we go. There's the glazing. Just turn, turn it around, and you can see it's, it's an exact fit in the. Uh, of course, now I can't get it out. <laughs> an exact fit in the uh, in the frame. Let's move it back again. Okay, so that's the uh, the glazing ready to go. Uh, next um, in the layer is the. Uh, mat itself. But I'll, I'll go down, down to the phone call next. I'll do the mat last. So this is the foam core. This is a uh, five millimeter thick foam core and this just gives it uh, the, the, the picture some backing and it also separates the um, hardboard backing from the image itself. This is acid free so it ensures that we have a, a really good clean um, uh, uh, Acid free environment for the for the print so it doesn't get damaged. So again I'm using the guide and this one I can get on there. Now there's a second setting on here because this is thicker so now this goes to the foam core setting it lowers the blade down. Now this will cut through if a single pass Sizes 305. Okay, this one I'm going to have to measure again because there's not enough, quite enough there to uh, make sure it's square. 305 at that end, 306 at that end, so let's just tease it around. 305 at both ends. And there's the mat. So that's the glazing and the mat. Oh, sorry, the uh, the foam core. Now the backing. So that's that's MDF backing. That's actually a pain pain to cut. Uh, I do use it, but I much prefer the hardboard. <laughs> much prefer the hardboard backing uh, because you can actually cut it with this mat, uh, mat cutting system here. Cut through. Now we're Okay, put this back to the middle setting. You only use the uh, deep setting for the, uh, the, the pump core. 
if you try to cut with it on the long one, the, the, the blade will, will wind up. So this will actually go to the M1. Uh, if you try to do that with the uh, the MDF, it's an absolute nightmare. So uh, that's why I much prefer, prefer this. framing DIY but it's, it's just a standard acid free um, background it's a white core so you, know, you can't see any edge on it now one side is brilliant white that's actually the back the white which is the frame side is, is actually the, uh, the slightly larger side it's got a very slight texture on it so uh, this is a, a, a outcut from a, a different uh, one so I just need to trim this up just to uh, get this get this with a square edge because uh, at the moment it's got bevel edges on it. I don't want that. now two square square edges and what I'll do now is I can work from those. Now you'll see I'm actually working here with wrong way up. It's like the idea really is to keep the face side down uh, and then uh, I'll be a little bit, a little bit uh, safer to use. You won't get dirty fingerprints and things like that. Okay so here we go. This is the 250 cut. That's my square edge. That's my square edge. Of course, you can get as many different colours of, uh, of uh, this as you you can dream of. Three, four, five. Now, one of these has got a bevel on it. That one there, so I'll cut the bevel off. So these go that way around to get the bevel off. Now, again, I've not got enough here to use my square edge properly, so uh, we have five at that end. Well, that's not quite right. Five. Okay, so there's the outer of the Mac. So now comes the, uh, the inside pieces to do. This is where we now get back to our our piece, our our, our, our walking piece here. Now, what I said I was going for was a 25 millimeter. Um, border, but then there's an extra five uh, for the uh, the frame itself. So I need to set this to 30. There's a scale on here. Just line this up with 30 millimeters. It has in imperial as well. Now, for cutting these, you need to make sure you've got a sacrificial piece in, in here. Um, otherwise, you'll get a ragged edge. Now, working on the white side, the, 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 the non-surface side, just put this in against the stop. Grab a pencil and just draw. Now this, this, these are guides to uh, show you where to start and stop uh, when you're actually using the, the angle cutter itself. So these are where I'm going to start and stop my cutting. So this is the other cutter. Um, this is the angle cutter and it's got a little, little blade and you press down. Okay. It's got a little line on here which shows where the blade goes. So with this all in against the stop, put it on your own, line the line up with the line you've just drawn, hold it all tight, push down, then slide across until the line meets the line on the other side. 
pop that up and just do all the all sides exactly the same. And again, I'm, I'm cutting from the um, from the back side of the, uh, the mask, the mat. Sorry. One more cut. And there we have it. And look at that, it didn't quite go to the corner, but it's okay, it came out. So there now is the is the map. So that's um, all the cutting done. I'll keep me off cuts for while I do small small pictures. Okay, so we'll assume that the, uh, the frame is dry. It's, uh, I'll just move it back around over here again. This is back around to the, uh, the bench again. Okay, so now um, this has had probably probably 20 minutes. So I can actually take, take the pressure off this now. Take the, uh, take the frame out. And that is now beautifully uh, done, nice and tight. Corners are no gaps. If you do have gaps, you can actually fill them with, uh, with wax. Let me show you these. These are a set of um, uh, coloured wax crayons, essentially. But they're all in different, different wood colours. And all you do is you choose, choose the one which you think is going to be about right. And you just rub it. Rub it so it fills, fills any gaps and you remove the remove any excess and you finish up with a an invisible fill uh, with there. That's so that's uh, how you uh, just repair any uh, any bits that have not gone quite right. So let me just uh, get this out of the way. this in the back of my bench out the way. Okay, so we're ready to go. Uh, so the next thing we do then is uh, we'll actually prepare the, well we'll just check and make sure everything's uh, all cut to the right size. So we know the glass glazing fits in. Um, the mat will then go in on top. And look at that, it's very slightly too tight. So that's actually a like problem. I didn't quite get it square, so I need to just adjust that. Judges it. That one there. sure how I managed that, but I certainly did. Okay, that should now just drop in. That's better. And then we've got the foam core. And then the, the backing sheet, which we've got on the outside. So that's the that's the stack. So let's uh, start working on the assembly. So what do we need we need now is we need the mat and the foam core. I'll put the rest to one side. Now, a little trick that I use. So I use a, a piece of foam core and a piece of the ordinary mat. What I'm going to do now is make hinges. So I want these to line up. So putting the foam core on there and then the thing on, is on there. You actually finish up with these two being completely level. So that's the back. Now here I have two different sorts of tape. So this tape here is, is um, I think I mentioned it in the, the parts list. 
This is just a uh, very sticky masking tape. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to stick this across here and another piece across here. What I'm actually doing is I'm making a hinge. Now you need a second piece going across this way. That's so it'll actually show where to bend. Another piece across this way. Same at the other end. As close to the end as you can get to the uh, join as you can get it. Doesn't have to be exact, but the closer the better. Okay, so that now makes a hinge. So that will flat down just like that. So now get a picture. Make sure it's uh, clean. Uh, I think I mentioned this. I have this uh, lamb's wool duster. You zip it around in the air, and then it gives some slightly statically charged, and you can then pick any dust off of the surface. So what we now do is get this lined up into position, and we just move that around until we're happy with it. If this was one of my uh, major prints, I would actually be putting on my cotton gloves and things at this stage. Uh, but as this is just a, just a print I grabbed from the uh, side. Here's another little tip. Pop a clean piece of card on there. Get something heavy. Sit on top of it. Make sure it's still exactly lined up. All the edges, pay attention to the edges. And you can take that off and this won't move. Uh, as I mentioned, you, what you can do now is you can actually just use some of this tape and you can tape down. Uh, but what I like to use, I like to use these, uh, these corners. Um, you see that the, the amount of edge is less than the corner, so what if I just take these off? I can slide these on, make sure it doesn't move. Nicely into the corner. And now there's nothing actually attached to the, uh, the actual picture itself. And so if there is any movement in the, uh, in the picture uh, due to uh, changes in humidity or temperature, um, then it, it's, uh, it's not going to cause wrinkles in the, in the image because there's enough give in the, uh, these corners to uh, let it uh, let it move so that's now all down so I can close it back up and that's now fixed in uh, as as a picture in the mount so now we can start assembling the actual image uh, into the frame itself check my time on the camera oh yeah plenty of time so here we go. Now I've been just doing some sawing here. Normally I would vacuum up. Let me vacuum up before I do that. I'm doing this all in a continuous uh, motion. Now this, uh, uh, normally I'd sort of clean up a lot more in between. So this now is the protective film on the glazing. Great, I'm most at that corner. There we go. And it's actually on both sides. I'll do the other side. This is where I wish I didn't bite my fingernails. Okay, 
Okay, and there is the glazing. It looks really clean, but what I always do is just give it a, this is anti-static uh, lens cleaning, it's for cleaning glasses and things like that, and um, using a very, very clean cloth, just make sure that it's completely clean on both sides. And this stuff evaporates off so it doesn't doesn't leave any residue. You get a little bit of um, residue from the uh, protective film which uh, shows up if you're, if you're not careful. Okay so that's now going in. Now again I'm now going to assemble the two critical pieces using my anti-static, my static mop. This makes a huge difference. Uh, it may seem, seem silly but it's uh, certainly worth doing. And then just drop your image in. That's now done. Now your backing goes in. And again I got that slightly too big too. Not doing so well there, so let's just uh, trim this a little bit. This is a lot softer and I don't need to be as accurate, so that's because I was using the offcuts rather than the... Uh, you're getting a point um, point gun this is mine this is just a super cheap one so press down really hard so it's nice and tight and fire it in and what I do is I literally just put in two to start off with It'll keep a lot of pressure on the back and then you can check it and see if you have any dust or anything like that on the inside of the image um, because I've done this a few times I haven't so that's all good uh, inevitably the first few times you do it you'll find dust in there. So now I do three per side. That's just my preference. You can do as many as you like. Uh, inter inter these are the hard ones. I'm using the hard ones, not the flexible, because uh, once they're in you don't want them to come out again. Um, the flexible ones are useful if you want to uh, take, the, uh, take the image out again. So there we go. So that's uh, now in and uh, ready to go. So what we've got to do next is uh, actually put the tape on the back. This is the craft tape, adhesive craft tape, self adhesive. So what I do is I just uh, tear this off to the length I need. Piece for each side. What this does is it seals the uh, seals the back so that no dust gets in, um, and it just generally gives it a much more professional professional finish as well. second roll of this, it lasts an awful long time too. Um, now what I do is I have a little tiny piece of sponge and some water because so I don't like the taste of the glue. So put a little bit of water in there. It doesn't matter where you start, it's a short one and I just uh, wet that. Take it on the, on the top edge first and then crease it down in the bottom so it seals in nicely. Done. 
fast pace. As I say, this just gives it a really, really nice finish and uh, also uh, seals it from, from dust. Uh, because uh, if you get, you know, dust will actually creep its way in there, it's quite amazing. Uh, I had some, I framed up and didn't do this on them, uh, sure enough, after a, a year or so, they, they have dust. I didn't do a very good job of that, I wasn't very careful. But you can actually get this uh, really nice and smooth, I usually do. Uh, so that's it, that's, that's now done. So now you want, you want to actually put on the um, uh, hanging, that's actually quite a nice picture, I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> so, the top is now facing me. And what I want to do is, my pencil, again, I'll put my uh, brush away, I'll put it dirty. So I know I've got the top towards me, so I don't want to go. Now, I, I usually go down and put the hanger about a third of the way down. So this is 300 or something. I'm going to go down about a about 100 and well, let's go down 100. That's probably near enough. So same, exactly the same on both sides. Um, and then I drill a hole. This is a push drill right in the middle. Just to aim a little ways. This is a really light, uh, light glazing in here, so uh, I could actually get away with uh, uh, not using, not using these heavy D rings. But I use the same, same fittings on, on all of my, uh, my frames. Okay, and now um, this is, um, uh, I think it's one millimeter, it's very thin. This is a really light, it, light picture, so uh, I'm using very thin, thin wire. Um, I also use, use thicker wire for, for big, big pictures. So what I'm gonna do here is just cut a, cut a length off. This stuff has a tendency to unwrap itself, so I need to put that back through the hole. And now the little crimps. There's two of those. I'll show you a bigger one so you can actually see what they look like. So here's a here's a the one for the bigger bigger wires. You get them all different sizes for the different wires. Um, so they're like a, a little figure of eight and they slide slide through the wire slides slide through. It's got a frayed end on here. Slides through and then you slide back through the other way. Like so. And then you, you crimp it to uh, make the loop. So I'm using these very small ones. Um, Poke it through. Now here's a tip. Take the end of the wire through from the top. This leaves the frayed end, the uh, bottom end, at the bottom. Now pull that through. And then you need a pair of pliers, which I can't find there. 
and just uh, use the, the cutting edge just as crimp and bit together like that. That will now not move. So now we do the other end. Fingers <laughs> in. So through the now down from the top and through and then poke it through and then pull it tight. Put it tight like that so the uh, wire goes tight and then slide the crimp up, keeping it held tight and just squeeze squeeze the crimp together. So that's now completely tight and cut off a loose bit of end. And then make it really tidy. So a little bit, a tiny bit of uh, fabric tape. This is hockey tape. Uh, my daughter plays ice hockey and um, just wrap that around the cut end of the uh, wire. That just stops there being any loose loose wires or anything like that to uh, catch a finger if someone should uh, run their hand on it. And it just gives it a much more professional professional finish. So that's now, now it. That's now got the uh, wire on the back, picture on the front, I got it right way up, which is great. One other thing I do, um, usually with bigger, bigger pictures, is I put a little felt dot trying to find, find my belt, can find my belt. Ah, there it is. So this is uh, just tiny felt, self adhesive on the back. Just cut two of those. And these I just stick on the one corner. I say, I usually do this on, on bigger, bigger pictures rather than on the small ones. Uh, what that does is it allows it to actually, when it's on the hanger, it hangs flat against the wall so that it's uh, um, completely, uh, completely clear. Now, I didn't finish this, this wooden frame. You can finish it with varnish or whatever. Do that before you assemble the frame. But that's it. So that's now um, a nice finished frame. I usually stick a label on here saying the subject of the, print, the picture and um, you know, the fact that I, I took it, I framed it uh, and all that sort of thing. But that's it. That's now you know, a very, very nice gift for someone. And you can see it doesn't take, doesn't take too long. Okay, there you go.